Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over some very basic inventory interactions. We're not going to be doing the whole thing in one video. We're going to be instead doing the first video on just picking up items and interacting with them and highlighting them when you're nearby. And then next week we'll go over basic UI and dropping items. And then the week after that, we'll go over some very basic equipping and unequipping systems. We're not going to go into too much detail. I want this to be very basic and easy to implement in pretty much anyone's project. And as such, we're going to kind of go on a basis of having Having an array of resources that are the different items you can pick up and then when you pick up an item it checks that array to find the item you just picked up and stores it into your inventory so that that way later on we can go ahead and serialize this data and save it to the hard drive but without further ado let's go ahead and hop into Godot and get started now you'll notice we do have a player controller GD and a player controller monos.cs now we're doing everything in both languages however I am going to be naming the file types as whatever the name is for GD and then for CS whatever the name is monos Mono, so that that way we can differentiate the two. If you're going with C Sharp, just go ahead and remove the mono and just when you're making the files, name them whatever the base name is. We're not gonna be doing too many scripts so it shouldn't be too big of an issue. So first off, let's go ahead and create a new folder inside of player. This folder's name is going to be interaction and it's gonna be handling everything having to do with an area 3D around the player. As the player moves through the world, it's gonna use it to highlight objects that are nearby and also allow you to pick them up. So within that folder, let's go ahead and create two new scripts. These scripts are going to be called player interaction handler.gd and player interaction handler mono.cs for the C sharp version. Before we dive into code, let's go ahead and create another folder and this one's going to be for all inventory related things. So we're just going to call it inventory and let's create a couple new scripts there. The first one is going to be called interactable item and interactable item mono.cs respectively. We're also going to have item data and this one's going to be of type resource as well as item data mono.cs for the CS version, which is also going to be resource. Now, the, basically the way this is going to work is we're going to have a resource that's going to keep track of each of the different items, what their names are, and later on we'll use it for like icons and things like that. And it's going to have the prefab that is actually going to be spawned into the world when we drop the item. Now that prefab, when you go to pick up an item, is going to look through all of the available items in the templates list and find the one that has the same prefab as it is, and then select that one when you pick up an item. So we're going to start with the simplest of things, which is going to be the interactable item. We're going to go ahead and dive in and this shouldn't be too complicated, so we'll just move straight on from it to item data when we're done. Now, first off, it's gonna be of type node3d as opposed to node, and we're also gonna go ahead and add a class name for interactable item, and then of course, interactable item mono for the c -sharp version. Now, just below this, we're gonna go ahead and add our export, and this is gonna be an item highlight mesh, and this will be of type mesh instance 3d. And we don't need either one of these functions, so we're just gonna go ahead and delete them and create a new function that's going to be used to highlight the item and it's going to be called gain focus. And we're just going to set the item highlight mesh to visible. And then conversely, we're also going to have a lose focus function. And both of these working in tandem will allow you to turn on and off the highlight mesh from the interactable script. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is the item data resource. First off, we're going to go ahead and have the name item data for the class name. And then in C sharp, it's just going to be item data mono. Make sure to make this one a global class in the C sharp though as we will need to instantiate this from the editor. And we're gonna add two new exports in. They're gonna be called item name and item model prefab. One is going to be a string and that's just gonna be the name of the item. The other one's gonna be the pack scene that's actually spawned when you drop the item or the item that you pick up. Now, mind you, we will be later on adding an icon here, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. All right, so next up is the more complicated of all the scripts. We're gonna be doing the player interaction handler. Now the player interaction handler is gonna be extending from area 3D. And this is going to be handling all the items around the player and interacting with them as you see fit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new array for item types. And this will be of type item data or item data mono in the C sharp version. And this is going to be essentially all the templates for all the items that we're allowed to pick up. Now, following this, we're going to go ahead and create a private variable in C sharp or just a variable in Godot script. And it's going to be called nearby bodies. And we're just going to create an array of interactable items. And this will just be keeping track of everything in the general vicinity. We can go ahead and remove the ready and process function. And we're gonna create two new functions for the on body entered area and on body exited area. So stepping through this, we whenever an object enters into an area 3D, we get its node 3D for whatever the object is. And in this case, we're gonna to check to see if it's of type interactable item. So we're just going to use body is interactable item. And then in both cases, we're just going to use the gain focus function. But in the C sharp version, we'll be casting it to a item object. So we'll be using item.gainfocus. And then we're just gonna go ahead and add that body 
directly to the nearby bodies one way or the other. Then we're also going to go ahead and create an on object exited area. So we're just going to be checking in both cases, if it is an interactable object and it is in the nearby bodies array, then we're going to lose focus and we're going to remove it from the array. This just keeps track of any sort of weird shenanigans that happens if an object maybe is inside of the area and leaves, but isn't in the nearby bodies array for whatever reason. I don't see any situation where that would be the case, but just to be sure. Now we have a list of all the objects nearby. We do need a function for actually deleting those objects and saying that we picked them up. So let's go ahead and create a new override input function. So we're just going to be using the event is action press to see if we have pressed the interact key. In this case, I've got it bound to the F key. Make sure you put that into your input bindings in the project settings. But following that, let's go ahead and call a function which doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead and create that function. We're going to call it pickup nearest item. And this is where it diverges. So starting off in the Godot script version, we're going to be first getting a reference to the nearest item and we're just going to cast it to null. We're also going to get nearest item distance and it's going to be a float, which is infinite. So it's just always going to be larger than whatever you compare it to. And we're going to say for every item in the nearby bodies array, if the item's global position's distance to our global position is less than the nearest item distance, so it's whatever item we last checked, we're going to set the nearest item distance to that distance, and then we're just going to set the nearest item to the item. So once it's iterated through all of the array, it will have gotten whatever item is the closest to the player. Now, this could theoretically be null if there are no objects in the nearby bodies array. So we're just going to check to see if it's not null, then we're going to go ahead and queue free it. And we're going to go ahead and use the remove at function to remove it from the nearby bodies array. But that's based off of index. So we'll use the find function to get the index of the nearest item in that array. So that I'll go ahead and clean it up and remove it from the nearby bodies array. So it's not sitting around in there. Now we can get a reference to the pack scene of the nearest item that we just picked up by using the scene file path variable. And then I'll get a actual path to the pack scene that it makes up that object that we're picking up. And what we can do is we can iterate through those item types up there in the array, and we can check to see if the item model is not null and its resource path equals that scene file path that we just picked up. We're gonna go ahead and print out to the log, the item ID. So that's just gonna be the index of that item as well as the item name. Now, later on, we'll actually be running this into some sort of handler for the inventory. But for now, we're just gonna print that out to console so we know we did pick up an item and we know which type of item it is. And we're gonna go ahead and return right there so that that way we don't ever get down here unless we didn't find any item. So if we didn't find any item, we do want to go ahead and print an error for item not found. So let's hop over to the C sharp version and do this function there. All right. So over in C sharp, we're going to make use of something called link. So it's going to be L I N Q. You can see it goes ahead and adds it up here. And this is just going to be helper functions to help us work with arrays. In our case, we're actually using a list object. So we're going to be taking the nearby bodies and we're going to be ordering them by the distance to the player's position. So we're going to be using X, which in this case is representing whatever nearby body we're currently ordering it. And we're going to use the global position distance to our global position. And then we're just going to select the first one out of that list. So it's just going to be first or default. Now, this could theoretically return null once again, because there could be nothing in nearby bodies. So we're going to go ahead and check to see if nearest item does not equal null, then go ahead and queue free the nearest item and go ahead and remove it from the nearby bodies array. And just like before, we can go ahead and find the item types using that LIN queue by using the first or default function and using X equals arrow key to get a Lambda expression X dot item model prefab. So that's whichever prefab this one's iterating through dot resource path equals the nearest item scene file path. And so this is just going to iterate through all of those objects and find the first one that matches this and return that. Now, once again, this could also be default. So we're just going to say if it's not default, go ahead and print the item ID to get this. We're just going to get the index of the template and the item name, just like before in the GD script. And if it is null, then go ahead and print out that error item is not found. And we'll go ahead and build that and make sure everything's up to date. All right, so that should be pretty much everything. Let's go ahead and set up a couple items here and kind of go over how to implement this. So first off, let's go ahead and go to the player body and we need an area 3D. So we're gonna add child node, area 3D, and let's go ahead and add a collision object to it. We'll make that a sphere shape and let's make that uh, about yay big. We just want to pick up any items around. Them. And for the area 3D, we'll call it interaction area. We can go ahead and put drag the player interaction handler over there. And we have an array here for item types. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and create a new item and we're gonna call it test cube. Now we don't have a prefab. We don't have a pack scene yet. So let's go ahead and make that. Let's go over to the test scene and let's create a new mesh instance. 
Actually, let's create a new rigid body. This will be our new item. And within that rigid body, let's go ahead and create a mesh instance 3D. Make that a box. And we're going to use the little, we're going to use the function up here to create an outline mesh using the mesh create outline mesh function. And we'll leave it 0 0.05. Let's create a new material for that. And let's set its emission to some very high value. Oh, messed up. Let me select the outline. All right. So now we have a little highlight around that object. We can drag it out here. But we still need a collider, so let's go ahead and create our collision, and we'll make it of type box. All right, so this should be a little object that falls out into the environment, but let's go ahead and disable that outline first, and let's rename that item test cube, and let's drag in that interactable item.gd script on. We're going to select the highlight mesh, which in this case is just going to be the outline, and everything else should be just fine. Let's put the collision to layer two so that that way we can make the area 3D only sample against that layer. So over in the player prefab, we can go and select the interaction area, and we can set it to mask on layer two. We can leave it layers as nothing because this doesn't need to be interacted with by anything else. We just need to interact with the world with it. Now over here, we can go ahead and drag this off as a prefab. Let's just drag it into the inventory section. We'll call it test cube. And now that we have a prefab, we can go ahead and add that to the templates. So over here in the test cube item data, we can hit quick load and we now have our little test cube here. And that's the prefab that the object will be referencing against. All right, so that should work. Let's go ahead and hit play and see how that looks. And if we walk up, Oh, right. I forgot to connect up the Area 3D events. So inside of Area 3D, we have a couple signals here. Let's connect up the body entered to the on object entered area and the body exited to on object exited area. We should be good to go. Let's hit play. All right. And we can see it now highlights as we get close. And if we press F, it'll pick that item up. And you can see it went ahead and went through that array and it found the ID of the test cube and listed the test cube name and the item ID. And if we had multiple different objects here, it would go ahead and give us the item ID of every object, whichever object we picked up. And this should work just fine for C Sharp. All right, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Next week, we'll get on to UI and having a drag and drop style menu with being able to drag out items that we have picked up and drop them into the world. But for now, that'll be it. I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.